Assalamualaikum and hi Today we going to continue from last week Reinforced concrete design Last week we have a look at the on the properties of concrete As the materials of reinforced concrete structural elements Today we going to look at reinforcement Reinforcing bars are produced in two grids Which are hot roll mild steel bars that have yield strength which is FY of 250 N over mm square and another one hot roll or coal work high yield steel bar that have yield strength of 460 N over mm square steel fabric is made from coal drawn steel wires welded to form a mesh it has a high yield strength which is 416 Okay, right now you have two types of bar, which one is mild steel. Mild steel will look like this. If you ever went to any construction site before, you will see this type of bar. And for a uh, hot roll or cold work high yield steel, this is the one eh. Macam ini, ataupun like this. Normally, uh, in site, you akan nampak this one and it's also state that FY ini adalah simbol untuk yield strength ataupun tensile strength 250 this one for mild steel you have to memorize this ya yeah. memang kita akan sentiasa pakai ya yeah. and another one is high tensile ataupun kita panggil dia high yield lah it is FY equal to 460 the stress strain curve for reinforcing bars are shown in figure. So this is the one. Uh, hot roll bars have definite yield points. A defined proof stress is recorded for two cold work bars. So if let's say they buat uh, tensile test, they akan dapat this kind of result. Eh? Kalau dia buat macam yang kita belajar masa part 2, which is kita ada tengok on the hook law. This kind of test dia akan dapat graph like this. The value of young modulus of elasticity is 200 kN per mm square. The behavior in the tension and compression is taken to be the same. Musty bar are pro produced as smooth round bars like this one. High tensile steel or bars are produced as deformed bars in two types defined in the code to increase bond stress the first type is square twisted cold work bar this type is obsolete and the other one is hot rolled bars with transverse rip so this one is obsolete and this is the one yang uh, i need type two and this is type one tak pakai dah basis of design the design of reinforced concrete elements to british standard BS8110 is based on limit state method. BS ni adalah British standard which is a standard lah macam MS, MS adalah Malaysia standard and this one for uh, British lah dia ada standard dia. The criterion for safe design is the structure structure should not become unfit for use for example that it should not reach a limit state during its design life. This is achieved in particular by designing the structure to ensure that it does not reach. The first one we have the ultimate limit state which is ULS. So ultimate limit state enables the designer to calculate the strength of the structure. The ultimate limit state uh, it, it is the whole structure or its element should not collapse, overturn or buckle when subjected to design load and for the serviceability limit state the structure should not become unfit for use due to excessive deflection cracking or vibration you usually uh, for serviceability limit states uh, this one dia lebih kepada appearance eh? which is uh, kalau kita tengok uh, on the cracking on the deflection dia lebih kepada appearance of the reinforced concrete elements but for the ULS, which is the ultimate limit state, this is more critical eh, because of kita tak nak the building fail. Okay, because of kita nak avoid collapse, kita nak avoid overturn, kita nak avoid buckling. So that kita make sure that the structure that we design does not reach all this limit. So limit-limit ni adalah paling maksimum. 
Okay, some of the ultimate limit state to be considered are for ULS, it is bending, shear, direct compression or tension and overturning. And for SLS, it is deflection, cracking and vibration. When designing a particular concrete element, it is usual to first ensure that the ULS is not exceeded and then to check that the relevant SLS are also satisfied. So first, we're going to check on the ULS, then later, then we're going to check on the uh, SLS. Having identified the relevant limit states, the design process simply involves basing the design on the most critical one and then checking for the remaining limit state. This requires an understanding on one which is the material properties. So in dalam British standard, kita akan refer pada clause ni, clause 3.1.7 and loading clause 2.4.1. Now we look at the reinforced concrete beam design. Types of beam section. Three common types of reinforced concrete beam section are the first one is rectangular section with tension steel only. This is the first one. This is the cross section uh, view. Eh. So you potong reinforced concrete beam too, you will get this kind of view. This generally occurs when designing a given width of slab as a beam. And B, it is rectangular section with tension and compression steel. If you look at above here, this is what we call as compression steel. And this is tension steel. Ini dia ada tension steel sahaja. Flange section or either T or L shape with tension steel and with or without compression steel. This is plunge type of sebenarnya T lah ataupun L lah. Okay. In our syllabus, we just going to learn up until this one. A sahaja. Another two ni kita tak belajar. The design macam mana eh. Just a simple one eh. Which is the rectangular section with tension steel. The characteristic strength of grades of material are as follows concrete uh, the fcu fcu ni adalah compressive strength you ada nampak untuk steel fy kita panggil this one adalah tensile strength for concrete we call it fcu it is compressive strength fcu is 28 days cube strength in newton per square millimeter the minimum grade for RC are given in table 3.3. .3. So this is the table, table 3.3 .3, eh, kalau according to uh, the pani. This grades C30, C35, C40, C45 and C50 in newtons per square millimeter. For example, if you look at here, the concrete grade is C75. That means that the FCU is 7.5 newton per mm square if the concrete grade is c30 the fcu is 30 newton over millimeter square and this is the one for the steel reinforcement that i have explained previously which is we call this as fy 250 for mild steel and 460 for high yield steel this one as being explained. The characteristic design loads, okay, clause 2.4.1, this is in British standards. The characteristic of service load are the actual loads that the structure is designed to carry. The characteristic loads used in design are defined as follows. First, we have the characteristic dead load. This is this the one I believe that you are very familiar with the dead load, with the imposed load or life load and with the wind load and just notice here the symbol okay for that load we call it gk for impose or life load we call it qk and for the wind load we're going to call it wk so design load is equal to characteristic load times with partial safety factors for loads biasanya yang engineer dah tahu eh okay kalau bangunan tu mungkin dua tingkat uh, size dia besar ni besar ni berapa square meter like that dia dah tahu berapa sebenarnya loading dia 
And sebenarnya ada calculation for that Loading for example dari dari roof You nak transfer ke beam Okay berapa berat roof like that So itu adalah kita panggil as loading characteristic load dia eh. And characteristic load ni kita kena darabkan dengan partial safety factor for loads To make sure that kita lebihkan design kita daripada the actual load tu Supaya the elements of reinforced concrete yang kita design tu Boleh support lebih lagi daripada uh, actual load Kalau you tengok dalam table ni ya We have 1.41, 1.60, blah 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 Usually we going to use the first one Which is that and it push and earth and water pressure Adverse, we going to take adverse as the dead load punya partial safety factor and for impulse load we going to take eh, take as 1.6 it's always depends eh macam mana kita nak ambil this thing but normally kita akan ambil the first one all this thing is being extracted from the British standard bukan saya yang buat eh kita akan ambil yang first one for dead load 1.4 and for uh, impulse load 1.6 for wind load tak ada Okay, normally for bangunan, a simple building like 1, 2, 3, 4 tingkat Kita tak akan consider the wind load because the effect of wind is very very minimum The ultimate design load acting on the member will be the summation of the relative characteristic load Combination multiplied by their respective partial safety factor So this is the one yang I explained earlier This is the partial safety factors Ini that load punya and this one impulse load ataupun live load ya yeah. after kita kira the ultimate design load using this formula we going to calculate the ultimate design moment using the formula of m equal to wl square over 8 i'm not sure if i ever explain to you tapi i rasa saya pernah explain kalau kata kan kenapa okey you pakai ni ultimate design moment ni sebenarnya Kalau you ada loading like this Okay, UDL You boleh kira dia punya ultimate design moment Maximum bending moment Bila UDL you like this Obviously you punya shear force akan jadi macam ini Ni adalah SFT And the BMD Is going to curve like this Curve eh And the value here adalah Maximum bending moment yang you pernah belajar sebelum ni And this maximum bending moment adalah sama dengan ultimate design moment Value ni you can simply dapat daripada calculation pakai this formula Which you don't actually need to draw the SFT and BMD You can simply use this formula to get the maximum bending moment or ultimate design moment Provided that the loading on, on top of the beam here adalah UDL Dan dia sama for the sepanjang-panjang For example 10 meter length of the beam Then the UDL dia pun sama sepanjang-panjang tu juga 10 kN per meter Then you boleh pakai this formula Tapi memang sebenarnya kalau untuk beam Load yang transfer pada beam adalah UDL oh, Ini beam 3D view then you have a slab on top of it Yang transfer the load Transfer the load pada beam ni Slab ni duduk atas beam Okay dia transfer dia pergi sini Dia transfer load pergi kat beam Ini adalah UDL Sama Sepanjang-panjang dia -panjang slab Kita memang anggap dia as UDL After we calculate the maximum bending moment We going to calculate the Design ultimate moment resistance or we call it as MU Formula for MU is 0 0.156 FCU PD square This is the cross section of the beam Ni adalah B okay. D tu is actually daripada For example you have two steel bar D is actually daripada top of the beam up until the center of the steel bar That's what we call as effective depth Berbeza dengan depth Okay, total height Ataupun depth Call it as H Okay, tapi 
effective depth dia sampai center of the steel bar. That is effective depth. Okay, beza dengan H. Eh? Okay, we must make sure that the MU must be bigger or equal to M which means that it is a singly reinforced concrete beam. So, MU ni sebenarnya adalah maximum. Okay, sebab nama dia pun Design Ultimate Moment Resistant. Kalau you dapat M because M ni, the one yang you kira ultimate design moment ni, ini adalah daripada berat loading tu. Okay. Berat loading tu you dapat you kira you dapatlah value moment dia berapa daripada berat loading. Daripada berat slab ni for example. Transfer pada beam. Itu adalah dia punya moment. But here, the ultimate moment resistance adalah Moment yang paling tinggi Yang boleh Beam Size macam ni Okay, size yang ikut B dia banyak ni D dia banyak ni Boleh resist Sebanyak tu Okay, jadi you must make sure that Ultimate moment resistor ni Untuk beam yang size macam ni Takkan kurang daripada Moment Yang disebabkan oleh loading So, sebab moment kalau sebab disebabkan oleh loading Lebih besar daripada moment yang beam tu boleh resist Dan akan jadi masalah kan Kalau ultimate moment resistor ni lagi besar Ataupun sama dengan moment yang disebabkan oleh loading You boleh design dia as singly reinforced concrete beam A singly reinforcement will be sufficient to resist the design moment However, kalau you dapat MU is less than M Meaning loading you lagi besar daripada apa yang dia boleh Resist on, oleh beam untuk size macam ni macam ni macam ni Kita akan design dia as Doubly reinforced concrete beam However, kita hanya akan belajar up until here Sampai sini kita tak belajar So don't worry Soalan dia takkan jadi uh, up until this one lah Dia akan sampai sini sahaja After we dah make sure yang M2 tidak lagi besar daripada MU Meaning dia adalah singly reinforced concrete beam Right uh, We need to calculate the value of K So K ni dia tak ada nama eh Dia adalah K K is equal to M over FCUBD square This is the formula M is design ultimate moment Meaning moment daripada loading tadi Which is the value of M sama dengan WL square over A tu And then FCU which is the character, characteristic strength of concrete FCU berapa? FCU 45, FCU 30, FCU 40 The B which is the breadth, lebar cross section of the beams And D is the effective depth meaning D yang ini berapa So kita dapat kira value K K must be less Or equal to K prime K prime ni adalah 0.156 Dia takkan boleh lebih daripada K prime Kalau dia lebih daripada K prime Maksudnya M will be bigger than MU Kalau K You dapat lebih besar daripada K prime maksud, Maksudnya M tu adalah lagi besar daripada MU Which is kita Bila kita proceed up until this stage For your syllabus kita takkan dapat this kind So kita takkan dapat K ni akan lagi besar daripada K prime Tak akan juga Alright so value dia mesti lagi rendah Atau sama dengan K prime And then Z which is the level arm Level arm is a perpendicular distance Between the line of action Of couple forming compressive and tensile force in a section The magnitude of level arm changes with the change of section type Which is which are Balance under reinforced and over reinforced section As you know Compressive force is resist by concrete eh? And tensile force is resist by reinforcement Level arm ni adalah Distance Daripada Line Yang Antara Tensile force dan Compressive force Okay dia tak sama Sebab dia boleh berubah Kalau katakan balance Z ni value ni akan lain Kalau under reinforce Z value dia akan lain Kalau over reinforce Z value dia akan lain Formula dia is D Which is the effective depth Dalam kurungan 0.5 plus You have to square root everything 
bawah tu 0.25 minus K ok and divide with 0.9 ni minus eh minus K and divide with 0.9 and you must check it it must be less than 0.95 D this one dia ada explain lah by limiting K prime to 0.156 in BS8110 implies that the not available depth does not exceed 0.5 T and hence that the steel intention will reach its ultimate stress before the concrete fails in compression to avoid sudden failure. So senang cerita kalau K awak ni less than K prime maksudnya takkan fail. Sudden failure. Kalau K lebih daripada K prime ok dia akan steel intention we reach it ultimate stress ok jadi dia akan fails in compression and akan fail lah and same goes with M is bigger than MU so definitely you know kalau K bigger than K prime meaning M awak akan lebih besar daripada MU so this thing is related Okay, bending ULS simply supported rectangular beam are designed so that the concrete above the natural axis is capable of resisting the induced compression and tensile reinforcement available capable of resisting the induced tension is introduced below the neutral axis. So there is a reason kenapa dia letak reinforcement dekat bawah dia bukan letak dekat tengah-tengah. Untuk beam, compression dekat atas ni lebih tinggi daripada Tension. Kalau you masih ingat, kita belajar masa chapter 2 which is bending stress and shear stress. Dalam bending stress, if you still remember you ada buat, uh, you lukis this thing. Uh, ini function dia supaya kita tahu right, apa yang you belajar. You will get something like this which is sama tak dengan ini. Okay, ini adalah bending stress. Right, so ke atas ni kan you akan dapat value dia positif and bawah ni negatif which means it is in compression and this is tension and as you know compressive force ataupun compressive stress is resist by concrete ok jadi concrete dia lebih pada compression and reinforcement lebih kepada tension so bawah ni adalah area in tension bila beam tu you put a lot of load on top of it maksudnya dia transfer load banyak atas this beam what will happen beam you akan start nak bend jadi yang bawah ni dia dalam tension and atas ni it is in compression pull dia ke dalam yang kat luar ni dia nak pull out ok dia in tension so kita akan letak reinforcement dekat bawah ni after we calculate um K, kita dah calculate Z dan kita kena calculate area of steel sebab sekarang kita nak design so kena nak design kita kena design daripada segi size of the beam sampai kepada uh, area of the steel steel dia banyak mana you nak letak AS is steel area M is equal to 0.95 FYZ M ni you tahu ini adalah ultimate bending moment 0.95 tu formula And then FY adalah characteristic strength of reinforcement. Maksudnya tensile strength of reinforcement yang you tahu whether it is 250 ataupun 460. And then we have Z which is the lever arm yang I ada tunjuk dia punya formula. Reinforcement clause eh. Too large and area reinforcement should also be avoided since it will hinder proper placing adequate compaction of the concrete around the reinforcement. For rectangular beam with overall dimension B and H, the area of tension reinforcement AS should lie within the following limits. So AS, limit dia inilah. So kalau FY dia 250, ini bukan 500, ini 460. Apa maksud dengan ayat di sini? Okay, maksudnya, for example, you have this kind of beam. Rectangular beam like this. If let's say reinforcement you letak terlampau besar And then Kita kena avoid letak size Bar yang terlampau besar dalam Beam For example you nak um, Pour concrete inside Obviously dekat side you akan pasang formwork 
Okay, form work, form work, form work. The other side, form work, eh? Form work. And then you akan pour concrete from top. If the size of the reinforcement is too big, okay, jadi macam mana all the concrete nasib in nak duduk dekat area bawah ni? Okay, because kita bukannya letak dulu form work kat bawah and then pour concrete kat bawah, lepas tu baru letak bar, lepas tu <laughs> baru letak pasang reinforcement kat tepi ni tak eh kita siapkan dulu kotak tu dia punya formwork and then you letak spacer sikit okay jadi you akan letak concrete how the concrete going to fill all the void kat bawah-bawah ni semua bila you dah kira AS then you dah dapat lah the area of the steel the area ni kita nak tahu berapa banyak steel bar yang you nak pakai for example you dapat 1260 mm square. So you going to look at this value. Ada tak yang 1260? Ada. So kalau ada you can just pakai 4 for numbers of bar T which is ini high tensile. Normally for main bar yang kita kira AS ni ini adalah kita panggil dia as tensile reinforcement sebab dia resistension. Jadi kita panggil dia tensile reinforcement ataupun main reinforcement ataupun main bar. Jadi biasanya main bar ni kita pakai dia T which is referring to high tensile ataupun high yield steel for numbers and the size is 20. Which means that di beam you mungkin you akan letak for numbers of bar like this. Ada 4 biji size 20 mm diameter. Ini sebenarnya refer pada diameter. All this number, the area of the diameter. Kalau you kira uh, ada 4 biji eh. Yang saiz dia 20mm. Okay. You tahu okay, satu biji saiz 20 adalah 314. Kalau you check lah, you boleh pakai calculator. Satu biji saiz dia punya S eh. S dia adalah 314. Kalau 4 biji, sebenarnya AS dia adalah 314 mm square. You darab dengan 4. Lebih kurang lah sebab ni dia ada round up eh. So, itu actually dia punya uh, area. Area cross section ni sebi satu biji ni. Kalau you kira area ni berapa, bulatan kan. Sebab dia adalah enforcement bar, dia bulat. Okay, area cross section dia adalah 314 untuk satu biji size 20 mm diameter. Okay, ini adalah diameter. So, sebenarnya pi t square over 4. You pakai pi darab 20 mm kuasa 2 per 4 adalah sama dengan 314. And actually sama je dengan size 16 ke size 12 ke. It is actually Bar saiz tu adalah diameter. R miles di bar and Y, y high yield bar. Okay, ini yang saya cakap tadi. Bars are designated on drawings as for example 4025 i.e. 425 mm diameter bar of grade 460. This system will be used for specified two specified bars in figure. Maknanya kalau empat digit number of bar, T ni you tahu dia adalah high tensile. And 25 tu adalah bar size ataupun diameter dia. Okay, kalau katakan it is part R25, meaning this is mile steel. Then we go to the minimum spacing of reinforcement. The limits on the maximum distance between bar arise from the need to ensure that the maximum crack width does not exceed 0.2 mm in order to prevent corrosion of embedded bars. That's why kita kena avoid sangat cracking of concrete sebab ada bar dekat dalam. If let's say it's, it is being exposed to the environment, dia boleh menyebabkan corrosion eh. This clause states that the following, the horizontal distance between bar should not be less than H aggregate plus 5 mm. H A G G. H A G G ni adalah aggregate size. Maksudnya, bila you buat concrete, you akan add aggregate yang paling besar. Part size dia yang paling besar. The gap between the corresponding bar in each row should be vertically in line and the vertical distance between bar should not be less than 2 HAGG divided by 3. 
where HAGG is a maximum size of course aggregate so aggregate yang you mix together untuk hasilkan concrete tu aggregate yang paling besar okay, adalah for example katakan 20mm so itu adalah HAGG the clause also states that if the bar size exceed HAGG plus 5mm the spacing should not be less than the bar size note that the pair of bundles are treated as single bar or of equivalent area kalau you nampak between bar ni okay, ada gap Ni kita panggil dia spacing. Spacing ni mesti HAGG plus 5 tak kurang daripada value ini. For example, the maximum aggregate size is 20mm. Right, bila you kira HAGG plus 5mm adalah 25mm. If let's say you dapat, you kira-kira-kira, you design, you buat this one, you dapat 26. Maksudnya okey lah. Since it is bigger than HAGG plus 5mm. Dia tak boleh less eh. Okay, bus size ni tadi kalau you tengok bus size. Ya, yeah, ini dia. Standard ya, yeah, dia tak berubah-ubah. Memang 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 20, 25, 30, 40. Kalau you nak size yang lain daripada yang ni, you kena tempah lah. Okay, custom size. This is factory made and typical size eh. Kalau kata kan, Bus size ni 20mm Okay 20mm dengan 25 ni 25 lagi besar So tak ada masalah eh Kalau bus size you adalah 4 Ataupun 32 Kita takkan pakai Compare dengan HAGG ni Kita akan compare kan dengan Bus size Maksudnya sekarang Ini Spacing ni Kalau bar you size 32 Spacing ni must be Bigger than 32. 32 tu adalah minimum. Sebab bar size ni ayat kat sini. Hmm. Macam mana kita nak kira spacing? Ini example I bagi. This is the cross section of the beam. Beam you panjang macam ni. Then you potong lah. You akan nampak something like this inside. So you nakkan spacing tengah ni berapa? Sebab kita nak make sure eh. Spacing tu cukup. Ini berapa? Okay, ini kita panggil dia B. So, B must be minus width. Okay, apa yang you nampak kat sini, you nampak ada 2 biji bar. So, 2 bar. 2 kali diameter bar tu lah sebab ini berapa you nak tolak ni. Nak tolak. Kita nak tolak semua yang kat dalam sebab kita nak dapatkan tengah ni je berapa. Kat sebelah bar ni, ini kita panggil dia as link. Dia adalah bar. Sebab bar macam link ni kan Contohnya You punya main reinforcement dekat bawah ni And then mungkin you ada hanger bar kat atas And then you ada reinforcement keliling lain eh So ini kita panggil dia as link Dia keliling panjang-panjang-panjang macam ni Dah ada banyak Dia berpusing, pusing, pusing, pusing Kalau you nak tolak dua ni Sebab dia berpusing kan Minus dua diameter of link And then kita mesti ada concrete cover sebab kita nak elak daripada reinforcement tu expose to the environment. So kena ada concrete lah dekat keliling tu which is the cover. We call it concrete cover minus 2 concrete cover. Concrete cover kita panggil dia C. Kita akan divide kan dengan number of bar main reinforcement tu minus 1. Sebab kalau you dah tolak 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 ni semua so minus Number of bar 2 So 2 tolak 1 So tinggal 1 Bagi 1 Sebab dia tak ada banyak Kalau katakan dia macam ni ha, So you ambil 4 Minus 1 So bahagi 3 Sebab space you sekarang Ada 3 sahaja Betul So you kena bagi sama rata lah 3 space tu I ada explain kan Pasal Apa beza H And apa beza D You nak dapatkan total height Which is From top Until the very bottom of the beam which means that D which is the effective depth plus dengan sebab effective depth you sampai tengah ni you ada lagi half bar kat sini separuh bar diameter of bar link okay, you ada link lagi which is kalau diameter untuk link kita panggil dia diameter prime and then you ada concrete cover kat bawah ni that's why macam mana you dapat the total height ataupun the overall depth of the beam it is equal to effective depth plus half of main bar plus dengan diameter of link plus dengan concrete cover this is the concrete cover yang I mentioned earlier the code states that in section 3.3.1 that the actual cover 
should never be less than the nominal cover minus 5 mm. The nominal cover should protect steel against corrosion and fire. Sebab kalau kena fire, steel you akan cair. So that's why we need a very good penebat lah. Okay, uh, penebat dia lah concrete eh. The cover to a main bar should not be less than the bar size or is the main is the case of pairs of bundle and size of single bar of the same cross-sectional area. The cover depends on the exposure condition given in table 3.2 in the code. We have mild, moderate, severe, very severe, most severe and abrasive. It always depends on the weather eh. Maksudnya, kat mana sebenarnya site you. Kat mana bangunan tu. For mild, okay, you see this is 25. So normally kita akan pakai 25 mm as the concrete cover. That will be all for today's lecture class. Uh, kita akan sambung lagi untuk tutorial so that kita boleh buat example sama-sama. Thank you so much everyone. Have a nice day.